Hey everyone, this is Nick and I'd like to welcome you to the first video in the Data Lifecycle Collection. Today, we're going to focus on an example on how you can use the Cloudera Data Platform to collect data from a stream, filter and enrich it, and then store it in different ways depending on what you're trying to accomplish with the data next. In today's example, we're putting ourselves in the shoes of a fictional electric car company. This company has five factories that all produce the parts for their electric cars, and these factories pump out parts at a furious rate. We've simulated a year's worth of parts production, and we're using this data as our source that we need to capture, filter, enrich, and store. To start off, we spooled up three data hubs to handle various parts of our data collection. The first data hub is going to be for our data flow, which is mainly focused on Apache NiFi. This is going to be our centralized place where we'll design the pipeline that will manipulate our data. The second data hub will house our streaming services, in this case, focus on Apache Kafka, which we'll use to create data streams to push and pull data from. The last data hub is going to house our operational database, where we'll use HBase to store our larger sets of data for efficient retrieval later on. Let's go into NiFi and take a look at how we take this data from a single file on S3 and split it out into a more realistic scenario where each factory is streaming data out independently. Starting from the top left, we first create a flow file. Flow files are how data is shuffled through a NiFi flow, and they contain extra information like metadata and lineage. Once a flow file is created, we use a processor to pull the contents of a CSV out of S3 and bring it into our flow. Once we've got the data in the flow, we want to split out by factory and send each factory's data into its own Kafka stream. With our data now being pushed into individual factory streams, let's go take a look at our streaming data hub and what tools we have available to monitor the streaming data. Streams Messaging Manager is the GUI that allows us to interact with Apache Kafka. In this case, we set up five topics, one for each factory, to most closely simulate a real-world use case where each factory is sending its data independently. We have more detailed videos on the Streams Messaging Manager if you'd like to go check those out. If we quickly go back into our NiFi flow and turn our processors on, we can see that our data source will start populating our topics with a year's worth of factory data. We can then go back into Streams Messaging Manager and take a quick look to make sure that the data is coming through correctly. If we look into the factory one topic, we can see that the data we're feeding through contains part information, such as serial number, part number, manufacture time, as well as what factory and machine it was produced from. This all looks good so far. Now that we have the data pushed into a stream, let's go back into NiFi and take a look at how we'll collect this data and what options we have available to manipulate it and store it once we have it in one place. The first thing you'll see is that we have each of the five factory Kafka topics on the left hand side already in waiting for any data to stream in. Once any data is received, it is all piped into a processor where we can do some filtering and enrichment. To accomplish this, we collect all our streaming data into a query record processor. Processors in NiFi are the blocks that actually perform work on the files being received, and in this case, we're going to use a query record processor to select out data that contains the specific part number and factory, add in a label of beta engine, and send it down a new path. At the same time, we're going to take the entirety of the data, including the beta engines, add a processing timestamp to the record, and send the entirety of the inventory data down another path. The first set of data containing just the beta engines and associated metadata is going to be stored in Hive. This will be a much smaller data set in comparison, and we expect data engineers from the company will likely be running ad hoc queries and joins on this data, which can be done very easily via Hive. The entirety of the inventory data, however, will be stored in HBase, as it will be used for a different purpose. HBase is designed to quickly do random read and writes over massive data sets and will therefore be used to track our company's inventory in real time. This way, whenever new factory data is received or whenever parts are sold and shipped out, the inventory will always be up to date. Now it's time to see it all in action. To see how it all moves together, we're going to pause the processor in charge of collecting the streams. Otherwise, it will happen too fast and we won't even see it. You'll see the factory processor start receiving the data from the various streams and collecting it all into our filtering and enrich processor. If we enable it, now we'll see the data split paths with the experimental motors going up and top into Hive and all of the data going into updating our inventory and HBase. We've now successfully collected a year's worth of data in an easy and digestible way. 
Stay tuned for the following videos in which we'll continue to expand upon this data and more as we move along the different stages of our data lifecycle. Thanks for watching today. If you found this interesting, don't forget to subscribe to see future videos. If you have any questions, head on over to the Cloudera community where there are plenty of other users ready to help answer any questions you may have.